uh, very at the beginning, the onset, there has to be trust between uh, the children and the parents. When the child feel like the parents don't trust them, uh, when the, the child feel like the parents uh, uh, doesn't have their best interests at heart. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on guys? Yours truly. Uh, I'm trying to do more videos like this where I'm in front of my window. And uh, so there's less set up, just me directly come and share whatever I have to share with you guys. Today's interesting because I have a interesting topic that I put down on a piece of paper, right? I had to make sure I get all my bullet points down for you guys. But on this journey that you know we've been talking about the American dream. What my definition of my American dream has been, the journey basically from me living Africa to coming and growing up in America and what that has meant for me. Uh, maybe some of you guys may also be able to relate. You might be a first or second generation African. You came over here and so the dynamic can be something that's rather interesting. So I wanna share some of that with you guys. I'm going to talk about the dynamic between me and my parents because that's something that was uh, quite impacted, um, uh, actually quite positively actually, uh, but I think it's something that is impacted once you do the transition between coming to America, coming from Africa to America, or vice versa even that say. So one of the things I wanna talk about is communication, how communication is impacted uh, between uh, parents and their children, especially African parents and their children. Coming up here, uh, the thing that was kind of difficult, first of all, to understand is I came during a time where I didn't know any English, so I had to learn all my English while I came here. I, I mean, while I knew back home was like basic stuff. We speak French in Congo, so um, that's what I knew. I'm fluent in French. Um, coming over here, didn't know anything, didn't know how to speak English, took ESL classes, um, trying to get acclimated to the culture, learning the language, all these different things, that played also a big role into like the dynamic between me and my parents. In terms of communicating with the outside world, basically anybody outside the home, and then utilizing that to also try to communicate now in the home, created uh, what I like to refer to as a third culture. So there's a culture between what I'm trying to adapt to at home, my parents' culture, uh, really my African culture, and then my American culture that I basically have to put a hat on of a different personality every time I walk out the door. Uh, just because I was trying to get integrated and assimilated to the culture, people don't hopefully don't think I'm weird or anything like that. So it created this third hybrid type of person. Um, but the communication between my parents and me was something very important. And here I put a couple of key factors uh, that I think parents should know, African parents, especially those who are moving abroad, who are thinking about moving abroad, should be aware of this. And also um, those first or second generation African children, some who are maybe born here, some who are some who are born here of parents who came from Africa or some who also came here by a very young age or some who came here relatively young. I'm gonna take it from the parents' perspective and then the children's perspective. These are some things that I think are very important uh, that uh, children are expecting their parents to do in terms of their communication style, their communication skill between the parents and them, right? So this is what the children are expecting from you guys. This is from the children's perspective. Number one, trust. Uh, very at the beginning, the onset, there has to be trust between uh, the children and the parents. When the child feel like the parents don't trust them, uh, when the, the child feel like the parents uh, uh, doesn't have their best interests at heart, uh, the, the child feel disinterested, they feel disconnected, they start feeling distant. I've heard parents tell me all the time, my child doesn't listen to me anymore. Because sometimes they can feel like all the parents wants to do is something on their best interest. I've heard this um, uh, quite often also where like African parents would not let their children go out, you know, like, you know, for example, I come from a, a relatively uh, strict Christian home, right? So when my friends from high school would be like, yo, could you want to come to this party? My parents would be like, what, a party? Never. They didn't want to hear about that. They didn't want to hear about other stuff that were predominantly part of the culture here, right? So they were just kind of like, nah, we don't want to do that. Stay home. 
Uh, so there has to be a level of trust. And that's just an example that I'm giving of myself, you know, when it comes to stuff like parties and things like that. And it's not necessarily that I was even going to bad parties or anything like that. I had great friends who were Christians, uh, but just the fact of the idea of me going out and hanging out with people just by myself, my parents were not too fond of that, right? Uh, so there has to be a trust. I think once the trust was built, uh, it became even great. I mean, when I went to college and university, uh, things just changed. I didn't even have a choice. I was so far away from home. I was living by myself. Um, so at that point, I think we started building more trust, um, more open doors. Um, and I went to a big school, you know, so um, there had to be a lot of trust in that sense. So trust is very important. Another thing that I think a lot of children are expecting from their African parents, especially those who move abroad, is the chance to be heard. The chance to be heard. What I mean by that is, I used to be frustrated a lot that uh, often enough I would say something, my parents would not want to hear me. See, my parents are not like the typical like, oh my God, if you don't do this, you know, we'll whoop you and ship you back to Africa kind of parents, right? And they're not necessarily like that. But at the same time, you know, to all my Africans who watch this, you know how African parents are. They don't want to hear your opinion. They just want to make sure that you heard theirs and then that you do theirs. And then maybe possibly in the future, whenever you have your children, then they might listen to actually what your opinion is. So that should be very frustrating. I think you should, I think as a parent, you should be more intentional about listening to your children because uh, in my life, I, I saw that the moments my parents started more and more intentionally lending their ears to me to hear my points, um, it brought two things in me. And I want to share this with you. Number one, self-esteem. See, often enough in African culture, a lot of young kids, self-esteem is kind of like beaten or uh, put down very easily, right? Because a lot of parents tell them, you don't know what you're talking about, just shut your mouth, uh, listen to me, uh, I don't care what your opinion is, which is kind of, can be kind of detrimental in the long run, right? Because the child feel like he doesn't know anything, his opinion doesn't matter, um, which is false, by the way. Uh, sometimes you do need guidance, you do need wisdom, but you you should have a safe enough space to be able to voice your opinion. Uh, so building self-esteem by letting me speak, like I remember th there were times where my parents literally wouldn't want my opinion on things. And it wasn't just like a moment where they wanted to reprimand me or uh, give me a lesson or anything like that. It could be on something that I'm not even completely uh, connected to, but they would say, hey, to call me and be like, hey, son, what is your opinion on this? I was like, wow. So those things kind of, you know, touched me and created that sense of self-esteem and feeling good about myself that, okay, my opinion matters because my parents care about my opinion. Um, the second thing that it, I think it, it did, and this is very important for parents to understand this, it helped me with my speaking skills or my speaking ability, my confidence in speaking. See, most of the stuff you would try to do outside of home, you, for some degree, uh, try to practice that in the home, right? So I think the biggest thing for me is like, you guys know, I do a lot of videos, so I do a lot of speaking. I also uh, am a keynote speaker. I've spoken at universities, uh, speaking in front of crowds. I'm also a preacher, so uh, I've spoken to crowd in, on a faith-based uh, type of setting. And as a speaker, people sometimes, they're living on your every word, right? They're believing what you said. So to be a great speaker, it would be great if you take time to build those skills, the speaking skills to, to become a great speaker, to be able to captivate your audience, uh, to not have, uh, uh, you know, uh, fear of public speaking or uh, the fear of crowds or stage or big moments or the lights, all those different things. I think for me, it started really in the home, right? The moment my parents started listening more to me, it forced me to become more clear in my message. I remember in the past, I used to be somebody who, and I'm still trying to fix this, I would put a lot of fluff in what I'm trying to say just because I'm just trying to add a lot of words. I was trying to learn the English language better than I am speaking now. Um, so I, I, was try, I was trying to, you know, I was much worse than now. So I was trying to uh, get better in speaking English and things like that. So I would just add these words in there. I would try to pronounce things correctly so people don't make fun of me. So they'll be like, oh, this African, where is he from? 
right? I remember these people used to make jokes about me and stuff. So I, w- I was always trying to improve. Um, speaking from home and especially having the ear of my parents willing to hear me helped me really increase those speaking skills, the confidence in speaking in front of people, looking someone in the eyes when I'm speaking, speaking to them, caring about actually what you guys want to hear and you know, getting the feedback uh, to be able to express myself so I'm not just rambling and wasting your time. So that was important for me. Uh, the, the third thing, right? So we talked about trust, the ability to be heard. Uh, thirdly, from what children are expecting from their parents is safety. At the end of the day, I think this is something that most parents who love their children do well is to provide a safe environment, right? Provide an environment where the child can, can thrive, can prosper, can grow. Uh, provide an environment that is, um, you know, as best of your ability free of danger. Um, because it can be crazy, right? You're in an environment where it's so hostile, like, the child's always know that the parents can flip out at any time. And like, uh, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, giving a punishment, you know, that is deserving and age appropriate. But I mean, like the parents can literally get violent or throw you out or something crazy like that, right? Like children don't want that. They want to know that home is the safest place they can go. They want to know that if they do something that the parent might not agree with, they can still come home because even though the parents may not like it, um, uh, they still love them. You guys have seen so many of those comedy skit uh, that a lot of Africans make about their parents trying to whip them with the belt or something like that. Uh, to be honest, I don't know of many children in America who are of African descent who still get those type of whooping. Uh, just because of the laws here, you know, child services, because <laughs> that's like the biggest threat nowadays. Uh, it's, you know, in terms of like punishment, I still believe that there has to be some form of discipline that is in the home. I'm, I'm a big proponent of that. But there has to be, in the end, it has to be safety. The child has to feel safe home. Like if that's not the case, like the parents, you're just failing, you know, in that regard. I think safety is very important. Uh, another thing that the children are waiting for is consistency, right? Consistency, like parents have to be consistent. Like one of the things that used to drive me nuts was like when my parents would have an opinion about something and then a week later, completely change your opinion on the same topic, on the same subject. I'm like, why? Right? Or like, for example, there would be times where your parents like your friends and I'm like, mm, I like your friend. Eh. Man, Frank, there's something wrong with Mike, man. Like, what's wrong with Mike? I'm like, what do you mean what's wrong with Mike? Mike is my, like, you like Mike, you can like, Mike came here, I'm like, mm. But the, and then they have these all superstition that, oh, well, I think Mike did that. I'm like, oh, God, be consistent. Or, you know, when it comes to, like, politics or when it comes to, uh, like, goals, uh, when it comes to some of your career choices or some of your, you know, what you want to study in school and things like that. Uh, you want as a parent to be consistent. So it, it gives, again, a sense of trust that the child knows that, okay, my dad stands on this. But if they think, like, oh, my dad thinks about this this day and it might change his mind the next day, change his mind here and then change his mind there. It doesn't matter. The child will feel like they cannot trust you because you are not stable right? What's what's consistent can be easily trust. So definitely I would say have a sense of consistency. And lastly, I'm going to end with um, love. You got to love your children. Like many of parents or African families, and I know this for sure because I've spoken to so many of them, has gone on this journey to trying to find a better place often enough for their children for those who will come after them, right? Uh, they've always gone to a journey to to find maybe a better uh, suitable school, uh, safety, where their children may not be in harm's way or uh, have a chance to get out of poverty or get a, get a chance to get a better education. Sometimes you give up the prestige you had, sometimes you give up some of the careers you had, sometimes you, you give up the family environment, sometimes you give up the culture, all that so that your child can have that opportunity uh, to make something of themselves. The point I'm trying to make is, you have to love your children, right? Often enough, we make, as parents, you make all these sacrifices, you move. So the, the worst thing that could happen is you not genuinely loving that child, right? In your actions, in your words towards them. If you're always putting demeaning words, trying to put them down, if you're literally telling them that you don't love them, you know, I think it's, it's something that is so detrimental. And as parents, we, we, yeah, you have to be careful. Um, and also, you have to be very conscious that uh, your child knows that you do care, you do love them. Um, 
Man, I don't even know where I was going with that. But uh, <laughs> anyways, subscribe to the page if you haven't done so yet and you get a chance to also see more videos like this one. Until then, this has been our journey into our my American dream and uh, being able to basically give you guys a modern day account of an African uh, living into America and adjusting to the diaspora and the culture, the new culture that is in America. But anyways, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay cool. Stay blessed. Always remember, you guys very best. Deuces.